The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, everyone. Apologies. We have a little bit of tech issues coming in here, but uh, hopefully everyone can see and hear. <laughs> we usually get on a couple minutes early for some pre-party shenanigans, but this time the shenanigans were technology shenanigans. If you can hear and see everything okay, just type that into the question box. So the audio should be nice and clear. Teresa French is here. I'm here. You should see our pictures on this title slide. Advanced lead generation for speakers. Is that all coming through to you guys loud and clear? We're getting yes, 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 yes. Carol, Cindy, Tim, James, Gigi, Sarah, Denise, Mike, Keith, Zachary. Fantastic. All right. Thank God. Man, it's like last minute tech nightmares. So thank you guys for being here. We are very excited to do the advanced lead generation masterclass for speakers. Let's hop right to it. I've got some polls. We're going to make this interactive. We're going to make this fun. It's going to be crazy town in here. So here is our first quick poll. And it's just about kind of level and revenue and sort of an income question as far as experience, because when you're seasoned, there's a different lead generation strategy than when you might be just at the beginning. And so let me pop this poll up and we'll kind of see who's in the room. And this, of course, is anonymous. And uh, it's really about what's your speaking and training income right now. And the bands are 0 to 40, 40 to 100, 100 to 150, 150 to 250. Some of our seasoned folks are in that arena. And some of our rock stars are at more than 250K per year. So go ahead and choose one of those. And let's see what the results coming back in here. I'll give you another five seconds to click on this. And then we'll show the results to everybody. And three, and two, and one. And let's see what happened here. All right, so we've got a good mix here. We've got about 65% of folks that are in that emerging area. 12% um, are in the 40 to 100, sort of ascending speaker, if you will. And we've got a nice sprinkling of some seasoned folks and even a couple of rock stars. So that's exciting. Cool beans. Well, here's the deal. We're talking about lead generation, deep dive into what you can do to find more leads, get more leads. What I would encourage you right out of the gate is everyone is not a good target market. Now, I want you to be really honest with yourself right here, right now, as we're kicking this off. Are you marketing to everyone? So let's say you're in presentation skills. Everyone needs more presentation skills. You're doing leadership. Everyone needs to be a better leader. You're doing communications or customer service. Everyone needs more communications and better customer service. If that's the case, type everyone in the question box. If not, put a comment into the question box with your specific target market, your specific target market or your specific target industry. And let's see who is maybe already a little bit a step ahead with lead generation into a specific target market or industry. Or if you are marketing to everyone, I want you to use this time with us today to make some good, bold, and clear decisions. Teresa, what's happening there in the question box? Do we have some everyone uh, people or what, what niches and target markets are people marketing into for their leads? We do not have everyone's. We do have some specifics. We have some generalities. We've got economic development and utility organizations, Lori says. Elaine has a real estate. Oh, we have an everyone. Christopher says everyone. Beth says nurses, hospital nurses. Tim is insurance and tech. We've got Katie and women in tech. We've got uh, Carol says CEOs and CHROs in healthcare and telecommunications. Got some specificity. Teachers. Cindy's working with teachers. Nice. Okay. Yeah, good. A good mix. All right. In general. So we got some people that have a bit of a head start with the lead generation. So you guys will love what we have coming up here. And you will also love the live demo that we're doing right on LinkedIn. And I will show you how to generate specific leads for specific types of associations, companies, groups, conferences, events, 
that are going to be a juicy entree into booking more and better and bigger speaking gigs on your calendar. So let's move on. First step, which some of you guys have already done, but this could always be defined and refined even better. Step one is really about decide. Decide. Have you decided whom you really want to target and serve? There's two powerful words in marketing, decide and define. Because at the end of the day, you attract what you define. You really do. You, so I want you to write that mantra down somewhere, make a bumper sticker, make a sign in your office, make it a fortune cookie. You attract what you define in your business. And here's what I mean by that. You attract what you define financially. You attract what you define as far as life balance, how much you work, what kind of freedom and lifestyle goals you have. You attract what you define in your business relationships. You attract what you define when it comes to attracting and connecting with perfect prospects, doing great projects if you're a consultant or a coach, finding best fit clients and audiences. We are always in charge of that decision. Your business doesn't happen to you. Your business is not, you're not a bystander in your business. You're in the driver's seat and depending on where you point that rocket ship or where you point that boat or car or whatever vehicle you choose to drive, wherever you point that thing is where it's going to go. It's where it's going to go. So if you know exactly which corporations, associations, conferences, and groups you want to do business with and you want to do get hired by, you will have a much greater chance of success. We often say to our clients, it's very hard to hit a target that you cannot see. It's like you're going out in the marketplace blindfolded and you do not want to go out in the marketplace blindfolded. So think of this as if we're bird watching and you're looking out on your backyard and we've got the yellow bird, red bird, brownish bird, black and yellow bird, blue bird, all kinds of birds. Any of these birds might be just as good as the next. The red bird's not necessarily better than the yellow. Yellow's not better than blue. They're all just different birds. But if you were after just the red bird, you would have a chance, one out of five chance on this back fence of finding that ideal lead or that ideal prospect. If you look not just at your back fence, whatever might be convenient, whatever might be expedient, whatever might be in front of your nose, but you go specifically looking for where these red birds live, you might very well find a tree that looks like this. So from a lead generation standpoint, where do you think you'll have more success if you're targeting red birds? You want to just hang out on your back fence and once in a while a red bird might land on your fence? Or would you really like to find this tree? Most of our clients and most of the folks that we work with, they would love to find this tree. Now I have good news. If red birds is not your thing, but that blue bird really caught your eye, you can also do this. You can set out a water dish. You can set out a little bird, bird pond, bird feeder, and you can only work with the bluebirds that are your ideal prospects. So my question for you is, doing an honest self-assessment, where are you right now with your lead generation? And I have another poll for you. Where are you right now with your leads? Some people say, hey, listen, I'm not even sure where to begin. Number two, I can find leads, but not with budget. Go ahead and click the answer that's appropriate to you even before I've read them all. Number three, I sometimes get good leads, but it's kind of random. Or I find good leads, but I can't close them consistently. And then the ninjas, and of course the folks that have no lead generation and no marketing and no sales problem, would say, I find good leads, and I close 25 to 30% of them on a consistent basis. So go ahead and vote. I'll give you another five seconds or so. And let's figure out where you are. The more honest you are, the more useful the rest of this masterclass training is going to be. So we'll close this up in five and four and three and two and one. And let's wrap that up. And let's see where people landed. So we've got a lot of folks in the middle. So some people do know where to begin. Some folks are finding leads, but not necessarily with budget to bring you in. Looks like the sweet spot is looking at your back fence, looking at that back fence. Like, ah, sometimes a red bird lands and sometimes it doesn't. A little bit random. And then some folks say, I find good leads, but can't, can't close consistently. And here's the problem. We've got 0%. And thank you guys for being honest 
and being very clear and, and, and truthful with yourself. Nobody said, I find good leads and close 25 to 30% of them. Teresa, you're our sales ninja here for our clients. 25, yes. talk about what 25 to 30% means in the world of sales. 25 to 30% is a rockin' salesperson. If, if, you're, if you're closing at that 25, 30, maybe even 35%, you're at the top of the reports. You're at the top of the league. So that's the goal. I mean, minimum usually is 20%. So that 25 and 30 is, is really where you need to be. And finding good leads, but also knowing what to do with the leads you have is super, super important. Amen. Absolutely right. So let's get you guys some help on this. Um, so lead generation, there's two different paths. The undefined lead generation, meaning look on your backyard, look on your back fence, see what birds land there today. Aimless, random, somewhat reactive, a little bit scattered. Maybe you're feeling some stress around your lead generation. Really, it's driven by luck. And at the end of the day, when we say lead generation, you go, ugh, ugh, exhausting, frustrating not your favorite activity. Compare that to a well-defined lead generation system, which hopefully by the end of this masterclass, you guys will have the blueprint for. Now we're talking very targeted, intentional, proactive, driven by momentum. It's got a lot of focus and clarity. We're gonna talk about the value of being narrow a little bit later on in the masterclass today. And when you do prospecting the right way, it is energizing. It is exciting. It becomes your favorite part of your speaking, training, coaching, and consulting business because you're finally getting it to work and you're opening up relationships, you're opening up conversations, you're inviting people to cut the relevant people, the right people to a conversation about how you can help them or their meeting or their audience or their group or their executive team. And it is actually fun. It is actually fun if you do it the right way. Now, how do you know when your lead generation is broken? Now, maybe you don't identify with this, but let me let me paint the picture for you. Uh, you're exhausted, like I used to be in the first two or three years of my business. Man, I felt like a pinball bouncing all over the map, and I had no idea what was going on. I just knew that lead generation instantly made me exhausted. Number two, you're doing it, but it's a lot of chasing. Too much chasing means disappearing prospect syndrome. You have a conversation, first conversation you think goes great, and they disappear. They go dark on you. They ghost you. That second call, that second email, that second outreach goes unanswered. Phone Voicemail goes to a marketing black hole. Uh, email gets sucked into the universe, who knows what. Or maybe because it's so exhausting and there's so much chasing, you sort of gave up. And I know that I've given up early on. I was like, you know what? Pfft, let's just let's just see what comes in the door. I mean, you never know. You know, I'll go out to the chamber. I'll write some articles. I'll do some blogging. This was 2004, 2005, really before any social media like, uh, you know, Facebook, et cetera, Twitter. Uh, we had LinkedIn back then. But I sort of gave up on it. I mean, I was kind of like, you know, this sucks. This just sucks. I, excuse my French there, but this is terrible. So where are you guys on this? Um, you're exhausted, too much chasing, or you sort of gave up. Uh, the folks that are, you know, already hitting it with lead generation, maybe this doesn't apply to you. The rest of you guys, I'd love to figure out, is it just tiring? Is it uh, too much chasing and disappearing prospect syndrome? Or has it gotten so bad that you're like, ah, you know what? Forget it. You know, if they want me, they'll find me. I'm not going to beat myself up with this whole crazy process anymore. So let's see where, where that is. Yeah, okay. So too much chasing uh and and 27% of people sort of gave up. Ouch. Wow. Sort of gave up. I know. I sort mean, I feel you. I've been there, Teresa. I'm sure you've been there in your business. I have. I have. You just you know it it does it. It gets to be overwhelming and it isn't fun and it isn't easy and it isn't exciting. And why do something you're not excited about? So right. you, it, it's natural to give up, but you can't you can't. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So here's here's what it looks like when you've given up. These are seals <laughs> on the beach. And you know what? I'll tell you what these seals are thinking and see if you guys can identify with this. Because this, this was me. I was that chubby guy in the back. 
I blog quite a bit. I don't need to generate leads. I don't need to be proactive. I don't, you know, I just, they're going to find me from my blog. I, you know, I, Teresa, I do blog quite a bit. Uh, I have an email newsletter, says this little guy in the front. If they want me, I'm emailing them once or twice a month. They know where to find me. I have an email newsletter. This one says, hey, I've written some books. People love my books. Clients hire me from my books. I've written a great book. It's out there. I send out books. I mail books to people. They like the book. They're going to bring me in to speak or coach or consult. Now, notice the activity level of these three SEALs. They are asleep at the wheel. They are napping in the sunshine. Our clients do not look like this. Our clients look like this. I want you guys to be the shark and not the seal. So the shark is constantly in motion. The shark gets after it. The shark knows that if he or she wants to eat, he has to get moving and hustle every single day. A day without a sale or a day without a meal, in case you're a shark, a day without a meal is not a good day. And a day without a sale for you guys is not a good day. So we really have to reverse this relaxing on the beach mentality, and we have to be more shark than seal. You have to get after it. And notice that seal is pretty urgent now. Now it's pretty urgent. Uh, before, relaxing on the beach, ah, whatever. Now it's like, okay, <laughs> shark's getting after it. I'm going to get on the move here. I'm going to get on the move. So here's how to find the ideal leads and the ideal prospects. Three critical questions you want to ask yourself. For the problem that you solve, who suffers from it more greatly? Who needs it more desperately? And thus, who is going to value it more highly? You can have a little strategic retreat with yourself. Sit down with a pad and a pen and a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and really do some free writing and brainstorming and mind mapping on these three questions. It will help you decide and define who your target market and who your lead generation should be aimed at. If you don't do this, you risk being that fat seal sitting on the beach waiting for something good to happen. So client success. Steve Weber came through our program. He says, during our work, we mapped out my three-year plan designed to produce $1.4 million in revenue. David helped me implement and accelerate both my planning and my doing. Working with David has helped me leverage my business into some serious revenue. Now, notice the language here. Designed, implement, accelerate, planning and doing. Steve is not waiting for the phone to ring. Steve is not sitting at home saying, woe is me, I can't find leads. Because we laser focused Steve, and he happens to be in the education market, uh, he's in Montana, he did a big initiative around public school education in Montana. You guys might not realize this, but Montana, I think, is number 48 out of the 50 states in having the worst public education. And Steve set out on a three-year mission to fix that with a sponsored speaking tour and all sorts of investable opportunities behind that, laser-focused target, school districts, superintendents, principals, education conferences, K-12, through all day, every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner throughout the entire state of Montana. There's something like, I think, 280 school districts or something. I wasn't sure there was 280 kids in Montana, but apparently there's quite a lot. And uh, so he focused on this like a crazy person. He excluded everything else, no more noise, no more distractions, and he started to generate some real momentum with this. So think about what can you exclude so you can double down or triple down your focus. Think about these words that Steve is using. Plan, produce, implement, accelerate, planning and doing and leverage. I love this blurb because he hits all of the key things that you do once you've got your speaking-driven business dialed in the right way. Once you have that target, second step is research. So for that target market, what do they read? Where are they already gathering? What are they already talking about? Who else is in their ecosystem? You have to know this if you're going to be an educated partner and a trusted advisor and not simply show up 
like most speakers show up, hey, you want to buy a speech? Hey, you want to hire me as your speaker? Hey, you want to pay me five or $10,000 to come speak to your group? You do not want to show up as that dumbbell speaker that's doing cold, dumb, blind prospecting. Cold, dumb, blind prospecting never leads to good results. So if you were pursuing banking and the banking industry, you would do Google searches on things like banking magazines, banking conference, banking industry news, banking industry headlines. You'd find every banking speaker, banking expert, banking consultant, because you're about to do some due diligence and some competitive research. And you would find all kinds of publications where if you were dedicating yourself to this industry, the editors of these publications would love to hear from you. They would love to publish you. They would love to have you as a columnist. There's no such thing as a generic columnist unless you talk about Dear Abby, and Dear Abby is dead. So if you want to have a column in an industry-leading publication, you have to be narrow. You have to be specific. You have to be a specialist. When you search for banking conferences, you'll go to the American Banker website. That's the number one result on Google. You'll see their list of events. That will lead you to their conferences page. That will lead you to their entire conferences directory. That will lead you to their other training and events. You might even come up with old, old information. So this is the New York Bankers Association from 2014. But that link to major meetings and conferences or the publications link, that will take you to the current. And so 2018, 2019, 2020, whatever you're looking at, past, current, future. And here's what I want you to realize. Leads are right under your nose and you often don't even know it. So if I'm looking at this banking association directory, Elisa Legg and Carrie Carney are going to become my two favorite new best friends. Elisa is the senior vice president of the New York Bankers Association. Carrie Carney is the director of meetings and member relations. There's their phone number, bottom right hand of the screen. There's their phone number. There is their direct personal email address. So anytime people are saying, oh, I can't find leads. I don't know who to contact. I don't know who the decision makers are. To me, what that means is you're not even looking. You're not even doing this basic 101 baby step of research that I just showed you to find the exact conferences, events, and decision makers who hire speakers for those events. And we're not even getting on LinkedIn yet. Wait till you see the stuff we're doing on LinkedIn. We're doing a live lead generation demo on LinkedIn. It's going to blow your socks off. So cool. Scott McClymonds happens to be in this banking and credit union world. And he, he did this kind of due diligence and marketplace research. And in Scott's own words, very excited about the results. In the pipeline are three paid speaking engagements at high profile leadership conferences, a large systems project with a top 10 US bank, credit union CEO mastermind groups that he's convening and facilitating, a year-long CEO leadership intensive with the largest state-based credit union trade association in the country. Why? He knew where to look. He knew what to say. He knew what to send. He knew their ecosystem and their environment. He knew where these people gathered. He knew the publications that they read. He knew more about their problems than they knew themselves. He really became a student of the game. We're going to come back to that student of the game concept here in a moment. Dialing this in can make all the difference in your lead generation, marketing, and sales success. One thing you can do immediately is to make two lists. List number one is the dream exposure opportunities for your speaking. Speaking, training, consulting. That's where you know that your target market is already gathered and you would speak there whether there's a fee or not. Because your dream exposure opportunities is where you will get paid because you spoke. The dream revenue opportunities, or your DRO compared to your DEO, your dream revenue opportunities are where you want to get paid to speak. So the top 10, top 15 corporations, associations, conferences, uh, industry events, 
where is the sweet spot in your target market like you saw with Scott, like you saw with the other folks that we're talking about here, where they know where they want to go and they've pointed the ship in the right direction and they push the throttle up to full and they are speeding towards that one goal. So I would encourage you to make these two lists, dream exposure opportunities specific, corporations, associations, conferences, and groups. Dream revenue opportunities, another list of specific corporations, associations, conferences, and groups. Here's a quick reality check. If I said, hey, I'd be happy to tee you up with any five of your dream exposure opportunities or your dream revenue opportunities, let me ask you a quick little poll here. Do you have a finite written list of targets in your office now that you could hand over and give to me? And I would say, okay, wonderful. I'm going to tee you up with these five. Second choice, and please answer the poll here. We're going to close this in a couple of seconds. I don't have a list written out, but the list is in my head. Number three, I haven't made these decisions yet. So I don't know who my best target leads are. If a guy like David Newman came by and said, hey, I'll tee you up with any five of the people on your list, you'd be like, oh, no, I don't have a list. I can't give you a list. I don't know who they are right now. So honesty counts. If you have a finite, written, workable list of your targets in your office right now, already on your hard drive, already on your desk, already on a piece of paper somewhere, that's option one. Don't have a list, but it's in my head. That's better, better than nothing. And then number three, wow, I've never even thought about this. I got to get busy on this after today's webinar. Which one is it? Finite written list. Don't have a list, but it's in your head. And we'll close this in three and two and one. And let's see what people got here. No big surprise. And thank you again for your honesty, everybody. So 61% have not made this decision yet, but you're going to make it soon. 26% don't have the list written, but it's in your head. And only 13% have a finite written list of targets that's in their office right now, on their computer, on their desk, in their journal, in their notebook, and they would get those five introductions because that was the exercise, right? So so you, you'd be positioned to get more referrals. You'd be positioned to be teed up by your speaker buddies. You would have lots of resources and connections and centers of influence that could get you into those written list of targets because you know who they are. And more importantly, you can now convey that to other people who want to help you. All right, cool. Step four is to do a competitive scan. And I'm going to give you the Google searches right here so you're, you're not left guessing here. You're going to Google your topic and speaker. If you're a leadership speaker, it's leadership speaker. Your customer service, it's a customer service speaker. Google your topic and the word expert. Google your topic and the word consultant. You're going to find lots and lots of results. You will get depressed. My advice to you is please don't. You're doing this for lead generating intelligence gathering. So do not get depressed. Grab everything that you find from your top four to five to six competitors. Don't do more than that. You start doing more than that and it becomes a whole project unto itself. You end up chasing your tail. So what's their articulation? What's their value prop? What's their website? What's their social media accounts? Watch their videos, download their goodies, join their email list. You want to be a detective. You want to start tracking and following what these people are doing and saying and how they're doing it and how they're saying it. You wanna see their client list, you wanna find their testimonials, you wanna find their recommendations on LinkedIn. You need to become a student of the game. So professional football players play a three hour football game on Sunday or Monday. They spend the other 168 hours watching game tapes, analyzing the competition, figuring out how they can zig where the others are zagging. If you don't know what the competition is doing, you risk sounding and looking just like them. So as far as differentiation and distinction, you're going to be behind the eight ball. 
You can be as great as you want at lead generation without distinction and differentiation. You're going to be a same old lame old speaker and none of the lead generation strategies will work because there's no, there's no urgency. There's no compelling reason for them to hire you if you look like, sound like, and act like all your competition. Let's say we go to Steve Farber's website. Steve Farber's a leadership guru, and we're doing a little competitive scan here, and we find the American Healthcare Association. And I might find two or three or four other speakers, and I might notice that, well, gosh, more than one has spoken for the American Healthcare Association. What do I do with that marketplace intelligence? We're going to look for patterns. If speakers one, two, and five on your competitive scan all have the same client, something must be working. You want to find the association website. You want to find the right person who's going to be the programs chair, education chair, conference and event coordinator. If you don't know, you can always go to the top, find the executive director or the CEO. Some associations have an executive director. Some associations have a CEO. We're going to come back to this when we do our live LinkedIn demo. Find 50 state chapters. So I'm going to go to the AHCA. That's the American Healthcare Association that I just found on Steve Farber's client list. And I'm going to click through on state affiliates. Lead, 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 and 44 more. Because there's 50 state affiliates. Bill O'Connor in Montgomery, Alabama. Kathleen Collins Pagels in Phoenix. California Associations run by James Gomez in Sacramento. Alaska, Dennis Murray in Anchorage. Arkansas, Rachel Davis in Little Rock. Colorado, I'm talking to Doug Farmer in Denver. I've got their mailing address. I've got their phone number. And for you guys and gals that like old school, you can even fax them something. Da, da, da. <laughs> Faxing. Is that even still a thing? I don't think it's a thing. I don't think it's a thing. But you can tell maybe these guys need a technology speaker so that the association is no longer publishing fax numbers. This is prospect research right under your nose. If you are not, just like I showed you earlier with the banking, these people, their main job is to find member education resources. You think all the leads are hiding. I'm telling you the leads are looking for you, but you have to make the first move. You have to knock on the door. You have to open the conversation. You have to add value to that relationship. If you're not doing this, it's lead generation abdication. It's lead generation malpractice. If you're not willing to do this three, four, five minutes of research, after doing your competitive scan, you've built out your DRO, you've built out your DEO, you know where you're going, you know where the ship is pointing, and now you turn on the turbo boosters to get there quick. You're going to find more than one association for any particular specialty. So let's change gears and talk about engineering. Engineering associations, I type that into Google, I get a whole list. In fact, I get lists of lists. So here's engineering.com the directory of professional associations for engineering. When I click through on that, here's what I find. Lead, 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 lead. Pennsylvania, Colorado, Michigan, Illinois, Virginia, Oregon, District of Columbia, Tennessee, Missouri, Maryland, Ohio. I can go anywhere in the country that has good bourbon. And I want to speak for the Air and Waste Management Association. I want to speak for the American Council of Engineering Companies. I want to speak to the American Design Drafting Association. I want to speak to the American National Standards Institute. I want to speak to the American Public Works Association. The more you look, the more you find. If you're not finding, you're not looking. Here is a question for you. Have you done this type of leads research and let me get into my little poll here because there's a couple different flavors of this. Have you done this type of leads research? Answer number one, no, but I sure will now. Answer number two, yes, but I'm not sure how to use the data. Number three, yes, but I get mixed results from my outreach. Or number four, yes, what I just showed you has consistently worked to get you bookings. 
So which one of those is true for you? Have you done this exact type of lead research I just walked you through? No, but you can certainly start now. Yes, but I'm not sure how to use the information that you find. Yes, but I get mixed results from the outreach. And yes, this has consistently worked to get me booked and to get me paid. And we'll close this down in three and two and one and zero. So we've got some work to do, my friends. We've got some work to do. Only 2% of folks have done what I've just showed you, and it's consistently worked to get you bookings. No, but I will now. We can help you with that. Absolutely. Yes, but I'm not sure how to use the data. We can help you with that too. And then the biggest group is yes, but I get mixed results from my outreach. Now, let me pause there for a quick second. If you're doing the activity, but you're not getting the results, it's very possible that something else is missing, funky, broken, and sad. Maybe it's your, maybe it's your marketing or your packaging or your articulation or the distinction that we talked about, that you look like a commodity speaker, jack of all trades, Jane of all trades, master of none. Maybe the video that you have on your website does not represent who you are and your current uh, positioning and packaging and messaging and keynotes and seminars and workshops. Uh, could be other things that are broken that have nothing to do with lead generation, but when you reach out, something doesn't connect or something doesn't align or something's not quite kosher based on what you send or what you say. So you can lose the deal for lots of reasons above and beyond. You're not quite sure you know what to do with the leads. Now, for each association, here's the great news. For each and every association that we're talking about here, you have one national, you have 50 states, and probably 10 more different associations just like them. Like I showed you just now with the engineering, there's civil engineering, computer engineering, bioengineering. Uh, there is um, electrical engineering. There's all kinds of engineering. Um, one national association, one mothership, 50 states, probably 10 more like them. What that means is for every niche and every target, you're going to have at least 510 prospects for state level and national level association conference speaking. You get to pick. You get to choose. Once you're dialed in to that specific reality of what the entire ecosystem is like, you're going to have success like my client and friend Tom Davidson. So Tom came through our program. He says, applying David's marketing principles and sales practices, specifically around niching and targeting and doing this kind of ecosystem outreach, especially around laser focusing on serving my niche market, resulted in doubling my business in year one and then doubling it again in year two. Tom runs a company called Leadership Nature, and he spe specifically serves the forestry and natural resources industry. That is his home base. That is his universe. That is the associations, conferences, groups, affinity groups. Uh, he's got a podcast called the Leadership Nature Podcast. He's well into season four, season five of that. The strategy Tom uses there is he interviews his prospects, which we also teach our clients to do. So how to use interviews as the ultimate marketing strategy to open doors, open relationships, and add value in a non-salesy, non-pushy, non-weird sort of way. So let me ask you, looking at that type of lead generation system, I'm curious if you had that dialed in, how much monthly revenue would a prospecting plan like I just showed you bring in? depending on your fee, depending on what you charge for keynotes and trainings and seminars, do you think that might bring in an additional 10,000 a month? Might it bring in an additional 15,000 a month based on who you are and where you are with your pricing? Do you think it might bring in 20,000 a month? 4 gigs, 5,000 each, 20,000 bucks a month? Do you think based on the other things that you do, coaching, consulting, product sales, book sales, CEO roundtables, masterminds, who knows what, might it bring in more than $20,000 a month? If you had this prospecting machine fine-tuned the way Tom Davidson doubled his business in year one, 
and doubled it again in year two, what do you think you might stand to gain? 10,000 a month, 15,000 a month, 20,000 a month, or more than 20,000 a month based on where you're at. And I'm gonna close this up. You guys can respond here in the next couple of seconds. And we're closing it up in three, and two, and one. And let's see what this might mean for you guys. Significant for everybody. Significant for everybody. So 44% said at least another one or two gigs a month at five or 10K. Maybe three gigs a month if your fee is 5,000 bucks. Maybe an additional 20,000 a month. And I love the second place answer is, man, if I had this dialed in, I could bring in more than $20,000 a month because of your suite of products and services and investable opportunities. So the financial incentive, guys, to get this right and to get this going is really big. It's really, really, really big. All right. I want to give you a couple of resources right here, right now that will make every lead generation campaign more effective. We use a video email system called BombBomb. And there's a special link that's on the screen right now. It's doitmarketing.com slash BB. BB stands for BombBomb. BombBomb video emails are fantastic door opening and follow up lead generation tools. So we're going to pop that into the chat window so you guys have a nice little clickable link there. Doitmarketing.com slash BB. There it is. And let me show you as you're clicking through on that, you can finish that out later. Whoops. Let me show you what that might look like. So video templates is the magic of a bomb bomb lead generating email campaign. Let's say you have an initial conversation. You can shoot a video template that says, hey, David Newman here, great talking with you about your event. Watch your email for the follow-up items I promised to send along. And I shoot that once. Notice I'm not using their name. I'm not using the association that I'm talking to. I have a generic video template that I can then personalize with some text. Dear Jane, can't wait to talk to you about your upcoming event in January of 2020 in Las Vegas. But then the video is generic. I can reuse and recycle and repurpose that video with every single prospect. Let's say I talk to a prospect. This happens a lot. And they just finished their conference. And they're not going to be planning their next conference for another four to five months. I could send a video email three or four weeks after their conference just ended. Say, hey, David Newman here. Hope your conference went great. When's a good time for us to connect about your next one? And then I put a link to my calendar where we can book that sales conversation right then and there. If I meet someone in person, third video template. So great seeing you at the XYZ event. I might send this to like 15 people that I met at the XYZ event, shoot the video once, make it a video template, personalize the message. So great seeing you at the XYZ event. Let's connect soon. Here's a calendar link. Let's make sure that we have a virtual coffee sometime this week or next. Last one, send out a proposal, follow up with a bomb bomb video email. Hey, just making sure that your proposal landed safely. Here's my scheduling link for us to discuss next steps. Can't wait to talk to you in our next conversation. And again, I can customize that email, shoot the video once. So if I want to send out 15 video emails, I don't need to shoot 15 videos. I do not need to shoot 15 videos. I can shoot one video, repurpose, redeploy, send that to 15 different people with 15 different email addresses, and I can crank these out about one every 60 seconds. Literally in 15 minutes, I can send out 15 video emails because I've used these video templates for lead generation. So if you're not using any kind of video email, I really recommend BombBomb. It's what we use. It's what I personally use to follow up with meeting planners and some coaching and some private clients. And the link again is doitmarketing.com slash BB for bomb bomb. 14 day free trial of bomb bomb for you guys, courtesy of Do It Marketing. All right. And that's the jackpot. Jackpot lead generating strategy is video email. Now let's go, let's go live to LinkedIn. This is the meat, this is the juice, this is the fun stuff. 
that I've been wanting to show you. LinkedIn demo, watch over my shoulder, and we'll do some of these live right now. All right, let me get out of screen sharing wacky mode. And we're going to come into here. And we're going to come into here. Can you guys now see my LinkedIn screen? We're on Looks LinkedIn. good on this end, David. LinkedIn is good? Yep. Super. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back. Let me go back to the top of this so you guys see it from the start. Um, I started out with doing a very simple search on meeting planner and association, but let's, if you haven't used LinkedIn before, I'll take you from square one. So square one is you log into LinkedIn and it looks like this, right? This is my LinkedIn homepage, nothing fancy. It lands on your feed. When you click in the search bar, you do a people search, search for people. Then when you do search for people, you're going to click on this button over here. It says all filters. You want this all filters screen to come up. So now I've got some choices here. I can go in here and I can say their job title is meeting planner. And their company has the word association in it. So I'm doing job title is meeting planner and you work for an association. When I do that and I click apply, I've got 376 results. Meeting planner at the Telecommunications Industry Association, um, New Jersey Association for Justice, American Educational Research Association, National Contract Management Association. Once you've done your first search, this little drop down comes into play. Now you have to know a little bit about the job titles. And I'm gonna show you and teach you right now a little bit about the job titles. Sometimes it's meeting planner. Sometimes they simply have the word conference. So it's VP of conferences, conference producer, conference uh, executive. Just put the word conference, doesn't even have to be a complete title, but conference is somewhere in the title and company is association. We hit apply, 2,142 results. And so we can go down here, director of meetings and conferences at the American Gas Association, conference coordinator at the National Tactical Officers Association, senior manager of conference education for ATD. Now I can also get industry specific. So watch this, if I go to conference, an association, and I want to choose perhaps, let's say, an industry. I'm going to go back into all filters. Let me go into industry here. I'm going to type in the first few letters of financial, financial services. I'm going to hit apply. Now I've got job title is conference. They work for an association, and they're in the financial services industry. Now, I can also, I can clear all of this if I want to. I can just come back into all filters. And let's do another one. Let's say you're after the boss. Now the job title is executive director, still working at something called an association. 25,563 results. I've got the executive director at the Bucks County Business Association. Executive Director at the South of South Neighborhood Association, Electrical Association of Philadelphia, Transportation Management Association. I can just go on a shopping trip. Even here, I can filter the results. So let me go into all filters again. Type in the word insurance. And hit apply. Whoops, that didn't work. Hang on. Sometimes it gets a little bit quirky here. I'm doing this on the free version of LinkedIn. You do not have to have Sales Navigator or any paid version. It's a little bit smoother if you had the paid version, but let me show you Executive Director, Companies Association, and up here, there we go, Financial Services. That's the part that gets quirky. Like when you type, you can type and it comes up and you have to use that. You type it in and hit enter, it's not gonna take. It's weird. 
585 results. Now here's what we're dealing with. Executive director of an association in the financial services industry. Now watch what I can do. I can drop down financial services. I can switch it out. Let's go to marketing and advertising and hit apply. 552 different people come up. I come in here, I do healthcare. Hospital and healthcare, right? I'm just typing in the first couple of letters and then I'm, I'm auto-filling what comes up. So I take off marketing, I put hospital and healthcare. Hit apply. 843 results. Executive director at Catholic, Catholic Medical Association. Harder to say than it looks. Executive <laughs> director at Alzheimer's Association, Home Care Association of Florida, Executive Director of Arizona Nurses Association, Executive Director American Hospital Association. Do you guys see the crazy value of this? I mean, this is nutty town. This is nutty town. Let me show you a couple more. Let's say that you want to find not just the executive director. Some have a CEO. You do CEO, 789 more people come up. So if you know it's a CEO, or you're not sure, is it CEO, executive director, or president, I'm going to search for all of them. So I just did this search for CEO. Let me find all the presidents of associations in hospitals and healthcare. 3,600 more. President of North Carolina Healthcare Association. President at Student Occupational Therapy Association. President Association of Oncology Social Work. President CEO of the American Association for Home Care. Guys, these are your decision makers. I don't know how to emphasize this more strongly. If you're not doing this, and this is free. This is free version on LinkedIn. I'm not using Sales Navigator. I'm not using Ninja Tactics. I'm not using some proprietary $500 a month tool. This is free. And if you're not doing it, you're leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table. So it's really, really huge. Remember I mentioned you got to be a student of the game. If you're a student of the association game, then you know that one word is association. A different word for these professional groups is society. So now I'm looking for the president of societies in the hospital and healthcare world. Found another 1791. Pennsylvania Society for Respiratory Care. President of the Athletic Trainers Society, a.k.a. Association. Vice President at the Photo Medicine Society. Executive Vice President of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. President at American Society of Thermalism and Climatology. I'm not even sure what that is, but, but this is what I'm doing. So it's President, CEO, Executive Director, Conference, Education, association, society, pick the industry. If you want an industry, I can deselect the industry. Now look at this. 33,853 people are the president of some kind of society. Don't you think you could find multiple lifetimes of leads right in here just using the secret ninja tricks that you just got watching over my shoulder in LinkedIn? I think you could. I think you could. So let me get back into the deck here. And we'll just pop this back in. I'm hoping that was helpful for you guys. So here's the lead generation. It's the search engine for people. The titles we talked about, conference, meeting planner, education, program. The organization type or the company name, association, society. The titles that you're looking for, executive director, president, president-elect, Board member, just put in board, board member, board chair, uh, member of board of directors. All of those people are going to be decision makers or first level influencers on who they hire to speak. Now, what you also need is when they go to check you out on LinkedIn, when they go to your website, here's where you might have a leaky bucket. And I'm going to help you with this because your website needs to have these nine things dialed in so your lead generation does not go into a leaky bucket. 
And this is a free Google Sheet that you will get by going to Speaker Web Checklist. SpeakerWebChecklist.com. It's nine different things. It's like a report card or a scorecard. You can't fill this in because the document's protected. What you can do is make your own copy, just do a save as, put it into your own Google Docs account, and then give yourself a grade. It's a yes or no, very simple. Is there one clear, obvious call to action? Is there a link or a menu choice clearly marked speaking? Do you show your smiling face above the fold? Is there social proof about you as a speaker to reduce buyer risk? Right? These are nine questions that if you don't have these dialed in on your website and in your overall marketing and packaging, you might be losing leads here even if you're reaching out. So speaker web checklist, that is a free gift from me to help you make sure you're not losing leads on the website. You absolutely don't want to lose leads on the website. Bryn Tillman came through our program. She says, David's program was life-changing in its impact. During our work, I saw a clear path to building a multi-million dollar business. Got two new clients just doing my homework. With the clarity I got by going through this program, I will triple the size of my business this year. What does Bryn mean? Clarity about the landscape. Clarity about being a student of the game. Clarity on who really hires her and how to find those decision makers and executives and presidents and CEOs and board members that are going to be her best buyers, how to niche down into a target set of industries where the demand for her topic is very high because she answered those three questions that we shared earlier, who suffers from it more greatly, who needs it more desperately, who's going to value it more highly. Once you make these decisions, my friends, everything becomes easier, literally. Everything becomes easier. Now, rhetorical question, I grant you this. Would you like to get some outreach templates that you can send out? Of course you would. Of course you would. So you came to the right place. Giftfromdavid.com. We're sending you guys out to the websites, downloading stuff, pulling up documents, all kinds of craziness. Giftfromdavid.com. And we're going to put that in the chat for you. This is my four best outreach templates. Assuming you've got everything else dialed in, website looks good, marketing, positioning, packaging, LinkedIn strategy, you're talking to the right people with the right language, what's the door opening phone call? What's the door opening LinkedIn? What's the door opening email? And then what's the multiplier strategy once you've gotten one in the door, how do you get the other 49? How do you get the other 49 state associations or conferences or the decision makers to love you and hire you and pay you after you've gone to Arizona and done a home run program for Arizona, after you've gone to Pennsylvania, done a home run program for Pennsylvania, after you've gone to Minnesota and done a home run program for the Minnesota group, how do you get the other 49 onto your speaking calendar? That's called the multiplier strategy. And you're getting a template for that as well when you go to giftfromdavid.com. Now, client success, Susan Robertson, here's what can happen when you have this dialed in with the specificity and the relevance. Just got another gig for $12,500. I'm steadily raising my fees and so far getting it. Still not getting as many as I want, but I'm getting more for the ones I'm getting. And then I asked her, I said, hey, how's that $30,000 gig that you were working on? Did that close? Answer is yes, it's in two weeks. So this kind of immediate, dramatic fee elevation and escalation, once you dial in the lead generation, what to say, what to send, how to present what you do in a clear, compelling, value-first way, the floodgates will open for you like they opened for Susan. And this is something that you can get going on right now. So let me ask you, based on what you've seen so far, would getting more personalized help be valuable? Would you like more personalized help? Uh, Two answers here in the poll. Number one, yes, I'd love to get more leads, prospects, and sales. And answer number two is nope. I don't want more leads. I don't want more clients. The reason I ask this is we're about to give you an opportunity for us to share some ideas and strategies and tactics 
for your specific business with your specific prospects and your specific leads so that you can start to rev up this lead generation engine. So if you already know like, man, this sounds like what I've been missing. This sounds like the secret sauce. And you'd like some personalized help on how to find, connect, and convert more of these speaking leads into clients, hit that yes button. If you're okay, and you're okay doing what you're doing, it's okay to say no. We love no, we love yes, we're good either way. And I'm gonna shut this down in three, and two, and one, and let's see, let's see who's brave enough to reach out for help. All right, well, people that did not want the help did not answer the survey. So that is fantastic. Um, so we will talk in a moment here about how you can get more leads, prospects, and sales and get our help and advice and guidance on how to dial this in for your specific business. Now, here's this entire process map of how we help our clients. Uh, today, we focused on the middle two pillars of prospecting, lead generation, and outreach. That's good news. The other news is that um, if you found 10, if you found 10 good leads, we just hand them to you by magic or somehow you find them on the interwebs. If you found 10 good leads, please select one of the following. I'd have a hard time knowing exactly what to say, send, and do. I'd sort of know, second option, I'd sort of know by guessing or winging it or maybe getting lucky, finding the right bird randomly land on my fence in my backyard, or I'd know exactly what to say, send, and do at every step. So 10 good leads on the calendar, 10 people that responded to an email or a LinkedIn message, or hey, Karen, Bob, Sue, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to have an initial conversation. You're like, oh my gosh, uh-oh, the dog caught the car. What do I do? I'd have a hard time knowing how to have that call. I'd sort of know, or I, I would know how to nail it. I'd know how to nail that conversation and probably close the gig. So let's close this down in three and two and one. And here's the deal. 32%, thank you guys again for your honesty, would have a hard time knowing exactly what to say, send, and do. So you guys should definitely take advantage of our little personalized help that we're going to give you here in a moment. Uh, I'd sort of know by guessing, winging it, or getting lucky. You guys and gals should also feel free to take advantage of our personalized help offer here in a moment. And if you know exactly what to say, send, and do, but maybe you want to get bigger and better leads and start elevating and escalating your speaking fee so that those yeses become more profitable yeses, I'm going to invite you also to take advantage of our little personalized help offer coming up here in a moment. So that's the good news. The bad news is you still have to have the rest of this dialed in, guys. You still have to have the rest of this dialed in. The strategy, the packaging, the focus, the sales, and the leverage, if you want ultimate lasting success, the lead generation and the prospecting, that's the filet mignon. That's in the middle of the process. That's the sweet spot where a lot of people get stuck. If you're having trouble with the strategy, packaging, and focus, we can talk about that during our consult. If you're having some sales challenges or leverage challenges, we can talk about that during your consult, or if you really think that the filet mignon is where you're stuck and the prospecting strategy and the outreach strategy needs some work, pardon me, we can certainly talk about that as well. So we're going to talk about all of these things. We're going to talk about all of these things. So here's the deal. Uh, we can keep going the old way, old results, not enough leads, clients, cash, still not earning what you'd like to earn, no guidance, no accountability, no support. I know that can be a hard, lonely road. I will tell you, my friends, no one does anything great alone, and the pros are the ones that reach out for help. The weaklings, the goofballs, the wannabes, the, the, the never gonna bees, those people don't reach out for help. My business hockey sticked in an upwards direction when I started asking for help and having the humility to be open to some outside advice. And that's what we're offering to you guys. Let's help you dial this in right now. When you book a confidential speaker strategy call, the link is doitmarketing.com slash call. 
We're going to help you look at all of these things that we talked about today. Diagnose what's really going on. Look at everything that you're doing. Look at your strategy, your packaging, not just the leads and prospecting that we talked about today, although we can certainly focus on that, but leads, prospecting, outreach, sales process, how much are you charging, how often are you getting it, how is your revenue growth coming along, more importantly, what's the leverage that you have in your business? Is this the freedom-based business and the lifestyle that you wanted to create when you first started your entrepreneurial adventure? For some people, the answer is yes. For other people, it's like, ah, not really. I'm working too hard. I'm in overdrive. My work-life balance is out the window, and I'm still not making the money that, that I want to make. If that's you in any way, shape, or form, I'm going to encourage you, let's get you on a call. We're going to fill in what's missing specifically for you, whether you're an emerging speaker, an uh, ad advancing speaker, or a mid-career speaker, or a seasoned speaker, or even elite professional Right, those are the five bands that we typically work with from emerging all the way to elite. Uh, we'll find out what's missing for you to consistently get the clients that you love and finally earn what you deserve. Here's how we can help. Our team has set aside time to speak to you personally about how you can apply these ideas and a few more to your business immediately. This is a deep dive strategic consult. You're getting it at no charge. Normally, we charge $497 to talk to the team. Uh, this is a campaign we did back in 2017. And you can see these are one-hour consultation calls. These are one-hour consultation calls that we did in the fall of 2017. You guys are not doing that. You're doing it at for $0. If you have an old link or a previous link, do not hit that. You want this link right here. Do it marketing.com slash call. That's going to get you on the calendar. It's going to ask you some questions and a questionnaire, preparatory questionnaire, so we can hit the ground running. And then we will spend some time with you to give you that personal guidance that I just promised. The only catch is that it's really not for everybody. So if building a high fee speaking driven business is not your number one priority, you probably shouldn't waste your time or ours. You probably shouldn't book a call. If you refuse to follow a proven process and you refuse to take action on very clear instructions, Again, probably not a fit. If you refuse to change your low-fee mindset and low-fee business model, it's also going to be very frustrating for you and for us because you have to be coachable. You have to show up on these calls coachable and ready to pivot, coachable and ready to make a change. It's also not for you if you lack integrity or your program and topic doesn't truly help people and companies improve. So we're not playing the shyster, snake oil, kind of low integrity, nonsense kind of game. If that's your business, we're not going to help you because this stuff does work and we're not going to put weapons in the hands of children. If you're down to your last few dollars, I also have bad news. We do not believe in get rich quick. We believe in get rich smart. We believe in building up a speaking driven revenue stream that is meaningful and lasting and permanent and that that can happen quickly but it doesn't necessarily happen right out of the gate. There's no magic bullet. There's no silver beans. There's no none of that stuff. So if you have a realistic picture of what you can do in your business based on today's training, I would encourage you book the call at doitmarketing.com slash call. The folks that we do our best work with are serious, decisive, and committed to making your business profitable over the next 60 days. Whether you've just started speaking or you're a seasoned pro, whether you're in this full-time or planning your escape from corporate, whether you've gotten a few paid speaking gigs or a whole bunch, if you're willing to follow a proven process to ramp up revenue and you take mentorship and direction well, you will have a fantastically valuable call. And if you want to put another ten dollars to $20,000 in your pocket over the next 60 to 90 days and build a predictable flow of clients and cash, no guessing, no hoping, no winging it, you will be ideally suited to book a call at doitmarketing.com slash call. So on this call, just to set your expectation, we're going to help you craft a game plan to hit your income goals for the next 12 months, what your next year could look like, and attract the exact right leads and clients that you want to work with. As I mentioned, for you guys who are waiving the fee, it's absolutely free. If you want our help to implement the strategies that you'll get on the call. We can discuss that also and see if it's a good fit in both directions. If not, that is fine too. 
That is absolutely fine by us. Either way, it's going to be the most valuable 45 minutes that you'll invest to grow your speaking-driven business and help you get real results. I want you to book that right now at doitmarketing.com slash call. We're about to go into our Q&A. So any questions that you have about today's training, about lead generation, about finding leads online, finding leads on LinkedIn, what to say, what to send, how to connect, how to have a compelling case for hiring you as a speaker, trainer, coach, consultant. Uh, we're going to have open season on questions. As you're doing that, I would encourage you, book the call, open up a fresh tab, doitmarketing.com slash call, get on the calendar, and let's have a very sincere, very real conversation about where you are in your speaking-driven business and how you can take it to the next level or the next version, whatever that next level or next version happens to look like for you. So we're open for questions. We have questions about lead generation, questions about LinkedIn, questions about the door opening process, um, getting hired, any phase or stage of what we talked about today. Please type your question in the question box. I will see them. Teresa will see them. We'll just knock them out one at a time and get you guys the answers that you need. As always, Teresa and I are happy to stay until we outnumber you and uh, every question is answered so that you leave here with maximum value as always. Teresa, any closing thoughts as people are typing in their question or thinking of questions and where does lead generation fall in the importance scale when we're working with our clients and, and what blocks do they have and what blocks might we remove during this strategy call that they can book? Yeah, I, I lead generation is paramount. You don't have a business if you're not generating leads. And I think a lot of people just with the new nuances of internet marketing and all the new ways of marketing, we've been duped into believing that they'll you know build it and they will come. We we build it and make it sexy enough and everybody will just want it. And the, the bottom line is we have to be proactively driving our business to go after those decision makers to prove our value. And that requires an initiative and a proactive activity on everyone, every business owner's part. And then it's about really having good, smart conversations. You touched on it earlier, David, in regards to, you know, it's not random and a lot of people call it cold and it really, it comes down to being smart. It comes down to find, doing your research, being a student of the game, finding those points of relevancy with the person that you want to do work with and then finding out from them if number one, do they know their problems? But number two, will they share those for, with you so you can show them how you can be a solution and not just a speaker? So, you know, without lead generation and without proactive activity, you don't have a business. And I think the biggest hurdle you asked about the, the roadblocks that people run into, I think it's that outreach reluctance and not feeling like they're, they know what to say, how to say it, who to talk to, I hear all the time. I think this is a question we answer for our clients all the time. Who in the organization should I call? You know, sometimes you just have to start with someone and ask good, smart questions to get to the right person. So, you know, I think all of that are, are those are all mysteries that are, that are common and these are the things we answer for our clients every single day. So, you know, if you have these same kinds of questions, if you've suffered from outreach reluctance, if, if getting on, on, on an email or a LinkedIn outreach feels a little odd, book a call. Let's talk about your, your company. Let's talk about your business, where you are, and most importantly, where you want to be. And let's figure out if it, the right path that might be for you. So um, we do have a few questions, David. Shall we launch right into them? Yeah. Well, I, I want to just kind of pick up just on a couple of things that came in early on. Uh, and I'm, I apologize because we didn't have the question pane open. So if you asked the question earlier, feel free to retype it now. It'll be at the top of the queue. Richard had a question about so you found them on LinkedIn, do you connect? And we've got a couple other questions like this about, okay, how do I get their contact information if they're not a first degree connection? If you remember the templates I gave you guys, giftfromdavid.com, there is a LinkedIn outreach template that you do wanna reach out and connect with them, not to sell them anything, but to offer up your network, to offer your network in a collaborative, uh, value first sort of way. So giftfromdavid.com, download that. That's got the phone template. It's got the email template. It's got two LinkedIn templates, one for the initial connection and one for connecting that with people who are already your first degree connections, but maybe you haven't connected with them yet personally. 
and then the multiplier template that once you've done business with one state association, how do you get the other 49 or the other sister affiliate type of uh, conferences and groups? So Richard, the answer is yes, you do connect with them. And uh, I think uh, Karen has a question. Yes, do you coach this personally? Uh, Karen, yes, we do coach this personally. So this is our business. <laughs> this is what we do. And uh, when you when you enroll with us and we decide to invite you in to, to do the program uh, and we decide that's a mutually good fit in both directions, you do work directly with me. You do work directly with the amazing Teresa French. You do work directly with our technology team, our copywriting team. We have an entire end-to-end -end solution to help you with this. It is coaching, mentoring, done with you, accountability, some loving butt kicking, and some a lot of direction and a lot of focus to get into action. Like we saw with the seals on the beach, you do not become a seal on the beach when, when you work with us. You become the shark. You become the shark that gets after it and starts to pursue and do the outreach the right way and start to fill your calendar with high fee speaking gigs uh, on a more consistent basis with better clients at higher fees. So that we do absolutely do this. This is the, the heart and soul of our work together. Uh, Phil says, thank you for this eye-opening opportunity. Superb presentation. Absolutely. Um, Mandy's question, I think, was similar. And then I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Teresa. Once we've searched for LinkedIn contacts, are we trying to connect with them first or are we allowed to contact them without connecting? So great question. The answer is yes and yes. LinkedIn, remember, is the search engine for people. I kind of sped through that part of it, but it's very important that you understand the value of LinkedIn, both on LinkedIn and off. It's the search engine for people. So can you use LinkedIn using that gift from david.com template? Sure you can. But if they don't respond to that, you now have the website. You probably have their email address, which is published on the website, and you can just simply send an over the transom email. What's the template there? Giftfromdavid.com has the initial outreach email template. So whether you do it through LinkedIn or whether you do it because you found their contact information on LinkedIn, it doesn't really matter. I sort of like doing it on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is more of a trusted source. It's kind of like connecting when you mail someone with like a, a Federal Express envelope as opposed to email, which comes in regular first class mail. I'm using some old, old school offline analogies there. But generally speaking, their email is so crowded and their LinkedIn message box is not nearly as crowded and it's a trusted platform. So I like to connect first on LinkedIn. That doesn't mean that you have to. But if you want to book a call, and this is true for Mandy, and it's also true for Karen, I would encourage you, book a call at doitmarketing.com slash call, and let's unpack the specifics of this for you. And then, Teresa, I just closed the window, so who's got the next question? <laughs> so we have a, a question from earlier from David Bryson, and he said, how many engineering groups would want leadership speakers? Wouldn't they want engineering industry speakers? Yes. And yes, so this is like the old joke about the shoe salesman who goes to uh, the Indian reservation. Actually, it's two shoe salesmen that go to the Indian reservation. One says, oh my gosh, uh, these guys don't wear shoes, completely hopeless. The other shoe salesman goes and sends a report back. These guys don't wear shoes, unlimited opportunity, unlimited opportunity. So we've had clients, and, and uh, Tom Davidson's a great example, the Society of American Foresters never had a leadership program. Tom Davidson's a leadership speaker who serves the forestry and natural resources industry. He went to the Society of American Foresters, and he says, hey, I think our members are hungry for some leadership training. They never get it at our annual conference what do you think of adding a leadership program to this year's conference? They listened. They said, not only do our folks want leadership, because all of them are state foresters, or they're very highly placed in the Department of Natural Resources, or the EPA, the state EPA. Uh, they say, you know what, Tom? 
we want you to speak. Would you also chair the leadership track? Would you hire three or four other leadership speakers in addition to yourself and help us build this leadership track that we've never had at this association? So now he's a speaker and he's on the conference committee and he is leading this, the leadership track at the state and national SAF meetings. So it's a question of uncovering the need and uncovering the gap and uncovering the opportunity. They will always want to hire a specialist. So when you say, hey, don't engineers just want to hear from engineers? The answer is no. Engineers want to hear from people who can solve an urgent, pervasive, expensive problem. So we've also had people in the oil and gas industry. So one client in particular comes to mind in Louisiana. Oil and gas, all these oil and gas associations, all they talk about is compliance, uh, economics and pricing. They talk about drilling technology and offshore drilling rigs and new kinds of technology there. They never talked about any of the soft skills. So when there was an opportunity for my client in New Orleans to say, hey, oil and gas industry, how about we do some leadership training because 90% of the people that come to your event are executives and C-level people and senior managers. They jumped at the opportunity because they want to extend member value. They want to extend member engagement and they want those members to come to the gosh darn conference. If it's the same old technology, compliance, legal, uh, drilling technology, it's going to be the same old boring event. If they can spice it up, make it more intriguing, more compelling, and more inviting, and that's how to have this conversation, by the way, with the executive director or the CEO, let's get an entire new cadre of people to come to the conference who have never come before because they don't need technology and compliance and regulatory. They can find that on the web. What they want is an experience that will make them a better leader. So part of this, David, is knowing knowing how to have that conversation and knowing how to package what you do in the most appealing, compelling, and effective way. And if you want to kind of figure out, we call this foreground background confusion sometimes, that you think what they want is this, but what they really want is that. Hop on the calendar, go to doitmarketing.com slash call and grab a spot on the call calendar and we can work you through what that would look like in your world. Fantastic, great answer. Great question. Uh, Gigi has a question. She says, so how do you get the contact info for the people you find in LinkedIn? Unless they're a first level connection, you don't tend to get that. Recon. Yes, and that was right. That was the same question from earlier about you do want to initially connect oh. with them and or find their email address through the website. And you know you can do it on LinkedIn or off LinkedIn. The important thing is that you've you've identified them through LinkedIn. But I like, go ahead and use the gift from David, giftfromdavid.com. Use that first LinkedIn template. And that's going to get you about a 60 to 70% connection rate. 60 to 70% of people that you send that to the first time they will connect with you and become a first degree connection. And that, of course, exposes all their primary contact info. Got it. David has another question. He says, for my niche, storytelling, how do I figure out which industry or group of associations is the group that I want to drill down to? Ah, so good. Well, remember the most important word that we started almost at the very top of the webinar, decide and define. You get to decide and define. But David, don't ask who needs storytelling. Figure out what problem does storytelling solve and then use our three benchmark questions that I gave you. For that problem, who suffers from it more greatly? Who needs it more desperately than most people? And who will thus value it more highly? So I'm just going to do an off the cuff. We're going to just pretend that you're on a strategy call, even though you're not, but you should book one at doitmarketing.com slash call. I, I would throw out a couple of ideas. I would say, how about technical professionals? How about accountants? How about engineers? How about tax auditors? People who are more comfortable with data than they are with stories. And the data never sells their point of view. 
It's the story behind the data that sells the point of view. And we could dig into this and we can turn this around five different ways. I could make the case for advertising agencies. I could make the case for the IT industry. I could make the case for construction or architecture. It's really about you laying out the options or having us help you lay out the options and then making good, clear, bold decisions about where you want to go and the fastest, quickest, shortest path to get you there. So you can start to get those five and $10,000 checks in the door. But there is no one answer. I mean, if there was one answer, then we'd all be zillionaires, right? So you have to figure out what's the strategy that works, David? What's the strategy that fits for the kind of lifestyle, the kind of business, the kind of fee level that you want to be playing at? And then really dialing in the prospecting and the lead generation that will fill that funnel for you. Fantastic. And he says, thank you. All right. Mandy has another question. She says, if you're if you have a st if you've established yourself in a particular niche, is it possible to switch to a very different niche, or will this confuse the meeting planners when the when they Google you and see all your old information about your previous niche? What a fantastic question! We have clients that do this all the time, all the time. Uh, I mean, five names are coming to mind right now, but we're not going to share our clients' names. But Teresa knows who I'm talking about <laughs> as well. Uh, here's the deal. Almost everybody needs to pivot or shift or evolve. If your current web presence is about the old you, you have two jobs. Job number one is to strategize and become crystal clear on what does the new you look like? What does the new you sound like? And then take most of your market-facing assets that are easy to change, things like your LinkedIn profile, Things like your Facebook uh, personal profile page, things like the home page on your website. If you're doing a website rehash, and we help our clients with the website stuff as well, the website needs to be marked in three different categories. Before the pivot, going into after the pivot, here's how it works. Number one, what can you pretty much keep as is? Maybe that's your bio, maybe that's your contact page, maybe that's a few other things. Number two, what things can you keep but modify? So obviously, the home page will need to change. The speaking page will need to change. Uh, other assets will need to change and shift. Number three is what things do you need to delete altogether? Old you, no longer relevant. Get them out of inventory. Uh, unpublish those pages. Uh, just get them out of view. So if you actually print off your website, 10, 15, 20 pages, whatever it is. And with a highlighter on your kitchen table or in your living room, have three different colored markers. Green is pretty much use it as it is. Yellow is I can keep it, but it needs modification. And red is delete, unpublish, replace. That is the quickest, shortest path to getting your online presence pivoted into a new direction. Now here's, I will give you another caveat that you did not ask for. And we have a couple of clients that are stuck in this kind of perpetual limbo and perpetual hell. If you don't do what I'm recommending, the pull of the old you is going to be incredibly seductive. It's like, oh, let me go back to what I was doing before. Oh, let me go back to what I was selling before. That was easier. I knew what I was doing. I wasn't making a lot of money, but I knew how to sell it. I was selling speaking for 300 bucks. I was selling coaching sessions for 500 bucks a month. I know how to do that. Forget about all this high fee stuff. Let me rubber band back to the old me. You do not want to fall into that trap. The people that have had the revolutionary success in our program are the ones that have shed all of the old things that did not serve them and they went from booking speeches at three and four thousand dollars to literally booking speeches at 10, 15, or 20. Twenty thousand dollars. So ten thousand dollars a day, two-day program. One of our clients came into the program at four thousand dollars. And she wasn't even selling what she was selling. She reframed what she was selling. Her skill set did not change. Her expertise did not change. 
If you saw videos of those two sessions, the $4,000 session versus the $20,000 session, you'd say, wow, this is 80% the same material. And it is 80% the same material. It's 20% new value proposition, messaging, and framing to make it more relevant, more valuable, and more in demand. So I think it's easy. It's not fun, but it's easier than you think to shed your old skin and to adopt the new. But what we're really going to keep you focused on, and I would even advise you to book a call if you haven't already at doitmarketing.com slash call, you really have to let go of the old. You really have to shed that dead skin that is not serving you. It's not working. It's not getting you the revenue or the lifestyle or the impact that you were hoping for. And there's a 10, 15, 20% pivot or reframe that makes all the difference. In our program, we call this repositioning yourself in the crosshairs of where clients are already spending money. So you're not missing the target. You're not hitting the outside of the target. Now it's a bullseye because you have repositioned yourself right in the bullseye area, right in the crosshair of where your ideal prospects and clients are already investing. They already see the problem. They already see that you have the solution, and it's an obvious no-brainer to hire you and bring you in. If you can position everything around that type of sales conversation, the floodgates will open, and your life and your business will never be the same. Awesome. Last question in the queue so far, Gigi says, relatedly, how do you track all of this? Big old spreadsheet, sheet, CRM, e-speakers tools? How does she keep track of all this? Well, data? let me. I'm going to turn that over to our sales guru and CRM ninja, Teresa French. What What is your recommendation, and how do you advise our clients? So, Gigi, it is really important to not use a spreadsheet. It, it a spreadsheet is a great place to start for a couple of dozen leads, just to get in the habit of being able to track where you left off. But ultimately in order to really, really mind a pipeline of leads that you are nurturing and talking to on a regular basis, you at all steps need to know where you left off in the last conversation in order to further it in the next conversation. The sad part about prospecting, and the unfortunate part is when we send out our first our first ship, if you will, out into the sea, hoping for them to, it's the first email, it's the first LinkedIn contact, it's maybe a voicemail or a call, chances are they're gonna go radio silent for a bit because the, the truth of the matter is they're busy. You are not their priority. They have other fires to fight. They have other things going on. So you have to be prepared to communicate with one lead several times over the course of time. So you need to be able to track what you've sent, how, how frequent you've sent it, and you need to decide in advance what you wanna say in each of those communications to make sure that you're furthering that communication and moving it forward to ultimately the phone call. And so a CRM is absolutely your best bet. Um, we have a solution that we call our speaker sales formula, which is a, a full on ready to go sales management tool that you get coaching. And that's something we can talk about down the line. Um, but at the end of the day, we really need you focused on being able to have good conversations, multiple conversations. And even if someone says, not today, we're not interested now, or I'm not planning for the next six months, call me back in six months. You need to be able to set triggers and reminders that in six months, they invited you to call back. They're expecting you to call back. And this is where probably 90% of business owners and especially speakers drop the ball. The fortune is really in the follow-up. If they tell you to call in six months, you better be ready to call in six months and be on the radar. Or better yet, nurture them all along that six months with relevant, high value content that gets them interested in solving that, those problems that maybe you initially talked about that you could solve and giving them additional information that might help them in that decision. So presenting yourself as an expert and making sure that you have their attention by the time it's time they're ready to talk to you. So a CRM is best, there's lots of options and really David and I both agree on this. The best CRM is the one you're willing to commit to using. So there is not necessarily one that's better than the other. They all have fancy features. But at the end of the day, if it can help you stay on top of when you need to speak to that prospect next, and you know what you said last time, that's the CRM you need to go to. If you're highly te technical, there's good ones. And if you're not, there's also good ones. So 
that would be my answer, David. Anything you want to add to that? No, I think that's that's pretty much it. But you know, also I think having a so a CRM is great and and critical, like Teresa said. Having the process that drives the CRM is what's the most important thing. I can give you the world's Absolutely. best CRM, and you you know you drop the ball, you don't follow up, or even you don't even open up enough conversation. You don't even fill the pipeline because you get lazy, you get busy, life gets in the way, quote unquote. Remember the shark, my friends. The shark has to eat daily. Sales happen daily. If your sales are not happening daily, we got to talk. And you should book a call at doitmarketing.com slash call. We don't want hungry sharks. We don't want skinny sharks. We don't want starving sharks. So yes, the CRM will help. But having the marketing, packaging, and sales savvy of how do I get the leads, open the conversation, follow up, negotiate, close, and get the check from initial contact to signed contract, you have to have the process because then the CRM will simply help you automate and remind you of the next step in the process that you design. And so we're going to help you design that in our program. If you're not with us, you have to have the discipline and the structure to design a process on your own. And to be honest, not, not a lot of people do that. That's why the CRM industry gets a bad name, even with professional salespeople, because the biggest number one complaint is what Teresa said. Professional salespeople even sometimes do not use their CRM and it makes their sales manager crazy and it makes their CEO crazy and it makes their sales numbers weaker than they should be. Zachary had a question early on. I apologize for missing it. I'm not quite sure, Zachary, what you mean. Could you talk about the on-ramps? Could you talk about the on-ramps? Teresa, what on-ramps do we think Zachary might be talking about there? On ramps to and Zachary, you're still here. I'm not sure if Zachary's still here or not, but I'm wondering what what is your question about? Could you talk about the on ramps? On ramps for maybe getting started. What are the ways to get started? What are the ways to get off? I'm not sure. Oh well, let's answer that. I'm not sure if Zachary might maybe typing a clarification question here. I'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Is, is like what to do from square zero and, and on the website. He said. On the What's website, that? David. Oh, on the website. Oh, I got you. So in the, okay, got it. So in your speaker web checklist, on-ramps are different ways of engagement. So download a report, opt into a video series, um, you know, get a special goodie checklist, cheat sheet. So think of those as engagement strategies or list building strategies. I like to think of it as engagement because engagement's a little less transactional than list building, but it's a way for people to try before they buy. And one of the philosophies, Zachary, is that we're talking about throughout our entire coaching and mentorship program, offer value, invite engagement, offer value, invite engagement, offer value, invite engagement. What that means is from small to medium to large to $10,000 checks, everything is driven by that philosophy. Offer value, invite engagement. You can post the blog. Blog has value. Last line of the blog post. What do you think? Or what's been your experience with this? Right? That is an engagement strategy. No money changes hands. No email addresses have to be given. If you're on Facebook or on LinkedIn, Offer value might be an article or a post or a status update. What do you think? What's been your experience? What's your recommendation, et cetera? That is an engagement strategy. A little bit of a deeper engagement strategy is, hey, I have this goodie. You give me your email address. I will send you the goodie. Now we're into a little bit of a deeper relationship. I'm not just browsing. I'm not just kicking the tires. I'm not just you know sniffing around. I trust you with my email address and I, I find enough compelling value in what you're offering me that I want to opt in. I want to opt in. I want to like, I want to share, I want to comment. I want to uh, engage with you in some way. Each of those things is what I call an on-ramp onto your website. How do you get them to engage with you? How do you get them to come back? How do you get them to tell their friends? that, oh my gosh, I just found this amazing leadership speaker named Zachary Alexander. I went to his website. He has these amazing videos. I, I started to binge watch his videos. 
His videos are fantastic. Then I downloaded his two-page le leadership cheat sheet or checklist. Then I started reading his articles on LinkedIn. And man, this guy has our problem dialed in. He like he must have installed video cameras in our meeting rooms. He must have installed uh, listening devices in our phone system because he knows exactly the pains, problems, headaches, and heartaches that we have going on here. In fact, I'm going to call this guy. I'm going to email this guy. I think we should talk to him. I think we should bring him in. That's the result of a consistent offer value invite engagement strategy. Now, you don't do that to boil the ocean. You don't do that, you know, at random. It is very specific, very targeted, and very intentional. So the way the, the way that your website talks about what problems you solve and what people you serve, 80% of people that come there should go, oh, that's not for me. 20% say, oh my gosh, where has Zachary been all our lives? This is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we're up against. My CEO was just complaining about this. This just came up in a board meeting. Our association was just talking about this trend or this problem. We got to get this guy. Because if you don't risk turning some people off, you'll never turn anybody on. And that's the job of your website. Your website is not built for convincing and persuading everyone to do business with you. Your website is a filtering and sorting mechanism that will help you separate your ideal clients and prospects from the folks that you wouldn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. All right. And he said, he does, he asked, what is your, what do you like best? Do you have a favorite, David? Well, you have you to know your audience. You know, I think a C-level audience, they're not going to watch a one-hour video. They're going to watch a two-minute, three-minute, kind of quick and dirty something or other. Uh, CEOs typically short attention span. Don't send them a 20-page ebook. Send them a one-page or a two-page checklist or cheat sheet or conversation roadmap. Uh, if you know your target market, you will know their information consumption habits. You know, one of the things that we have <laughs> that we just talked to our clients about is there was a detective show. And one, one the senior detective says to the junior detective, I want you to follow this guy. I want you to track his every move. I want you to, when does he wake up? When does he go to bed? I want to know how this guy likes his eggs. And that's our job as professional salespeople. So you want to know what time they get up, what time they go to bed, what kind of car they drive. You want to know how they like their eggs. And if you know how they like their eggs, you will also know what format of media they're more likely to consume or that they would be more uh, receptive to and willing to share and get the most value out of. But I will tell you, you know, HR people are different than finance people. Finance people are different than engineering people. Uh, frontline supervisors are different from VPs. Um, different industries, you know, the accounting industry is very different than the high tech industry. So it's about becoming a student of the game the way that we talked about, but also about their preferences, about their personality, about their traits. In our program, we go through an entire process called your buyer persona and specifically your, your speaker persona that you're connecting with people who hire speakers and what they want and what they need and what they like to see from you to be considered. So it's a bit of a studying process. And then once you have that dialed in, you know how they think, you know what they like, and you know how they like their eggs. I like eggs. I like eggs too. I like eggs too. So I like my, go ahead and book my a call and encourage everybody, Zachary and Gigi and Yolanda and David and Mandy and Ed and Carrie and who else was asking some great questions in here? Karen, the other Carrie, Alan, Peter. Uh, Richard, Lou Serrano, Denise, David, David, sure. Have me book a call. <laughs> I sometimes need some help. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here, folks. We we don't have this figured out 100% either, but everyone's a work in progress. So there's no shame in booking a call. And let me emphasize once again, as we wrap up, it's the pros that reach out for help. It's the pros that know they're good and they're always getting better. It's in fact, it's the best. 
It's the best companies and the best executives and the best entrepreneurs who are the most committed to getting ahead, staying ahead, and inventing the next level or the next version of their business. So if you book a call, it's not from a place of weakness. It's actually from a place of strength. And we're looking forward to speaking with you. Jump on the calendar now. That link is still open at doitmarketing.com slash call. And we will see you on your breakthrough call. Teresa French, I will see you soon. And yes, you I will. think that's it, everybody. All right. Bye, everybody.